Now, obviously, when you're coaching someone, there's going to be conflict. There's going to be disagreement. And I could imagine some of these athletes, they walk in with a lot of disagreement and a chip on their shoulder of what they've achieved already. And now they got to listen to you. How do you deal with that conflict to motivate, to get the end result, but also, you know, you don't want them to fire you. So you're, you're sort of beholden to the conflict in a way that a lot of us aren't. Many of us could just walk away from the conflict if you don't want to. Yeah, it varies. One, you know, there's, there's three things that I try to look at and then I'll give you an example, but just to give the audience something tactical, right? Like I notice when conflict occurs, it can, it can occur from a multitude of areas, but I try to just siphon it into these three for now. So there's, there's people, internal drives and fears, right? That's inherent. We understand that everybody's got something that frightens them or what have you. And again, I'll give an example. And then there's realities of the environment. Sometimes behavior is elicited just because of the environment that we're in and how somebody perceives that environment. And then finally, there's the other social factors and social agents that are involved are they trying to put on a show for somebody you know is there a crazy like youth athletes you know their parents even observing can be a huge factor within conflict or cameras you know and there's there's a story that was put into ESPN the magazine of a conflict I'd got in with an NFL player who was our first time working together I'd worked with his brother and he comes in and it was just supposed to be like we're like six to eight weeks in this program like we have a thing like oh it's a finely tuned machine and all of a sudden like six cameras come into this place that's like 2,500 square feet and some guy named Todd comes in from ESPN they're doing an E60 series There's a boom microphone. <laughs> and like, these are like the, the place that I co-owned at the time, this was a discreet place. Like cameras aren't welcome, right? Athletes don't go there to be filmed, but now we have cameras and boom microphones and they're like, can we turn down the music? And I'm like, what is going on? And the guy like shakes my hand and won't even look at me no time of day. So, you know, we start, I'm like, Hey guys, I announced it to the group. I'm like, sorry, obviously we have some distractions today. Like just, you know, keep doing it. Like, it's not like, it's like, 50 to 60,000 screaming fans. You guys are used to it. Just pay it no mind. There's no chance that's going to happen. Right. When there's cameras on there in this culture, like people are going to. Everyone changes. Right. So now all of a sudden, all these people that were really technically proficient and a lot of the lifts and things that we had been working on, it all just goes to crap because the cameras are in their face. Now, this one guy in particular who I'm working with for the first time, and I had taken him into the side and I'd just been like, hey, man, like I'm really big on technique. It's my job to protect your career. Like, I know you got something going on here, but like lock this in. You know, and we simplified things for him, but starts doing, we were working on a a clean and jerk progression, right? And it just looks sloppy and sloppy and sloppy and the camera's zooming in on everything this dude's doing. So I'm like, Hey, go down and wait. I'm refining some technique. Not guy keeps putting the weight back on. And I'm just like, you know, and you got to give ground to gain ground sometimes. So I'm like, all right, I'll give him another set. Looks like crap. Looks like crap again. Eventually it's just getting crazy because now all these other guys are trying to keep up with him and they're slapping on. This is why I say social factors, right? Right, Social agents involved. Now it's like a pure comparison. And these are the most competitive athletes in the world. So I have to flip off the music and I'm like, listen, guys, like technique is crap today. I get that there's cameras, but we talked about this. Lock this in. I go, this is your career. Like you get hurt. And all of a sudden I get ready to turn the music back on and I hear, are you talking to me? And I turn around and it's the new cat. And this dude's like, you know, 6'3", 6'4", I mean, 200 and damn near 70 pounds, right? He's like, I go, if the shoe fits, man, I'm talking to anybody. Technique's critical. Quit being sloppy. You guys are professionals, right? Like give them a reputation to live up to. Well, we had a new staff at the time too. And I had just written my book and these guys are waiting to see, like, do I give them the heat? Because I can naturally be a little bit more of an aggressive persona if I don't, you know, check that. I'm a little brother, right? You grew up getting your butt kicked (laughs) enough, like you fight and you scrap. Um, Or am I going to handle it via some nuanced social skill tactic? The right answer is a little bit of both with these guys. And so we get into an exchange for a little bit and it, it starts to get nasty. And then I start noticing his eyes are darting to the side every time. And he just keeps darting to the side. What do you think's to the side? cameras they're all rolling and I realize I'm not winning this argument so I back down I take you know I take the temporary L and I'm like listen all I'm saying is I'm trying to make sure you don't get hurt don't be an idiot this doesn't need to be an argument flip some music back on right then I go and switch three exercises in his program to things that are a little bit more self-limiting meaning if he screws them up the low the risk of injury is pretty low right like it's a push-up self-limiting you get tired you start doing it crap you're gonna drop a farmer's carry walking with two dumbbells self-limiting your grip's gonna give out uh, a prowler or sled push self-limiting your legs and so 
he thinks that like he's getting some kind of individualized workout. The reality is he had to get moved to the kitty group, you know, and then afterwards, afterwards, once the cameras quit rolling, I go up and I'm like, listen, man, like that, this is my job. My job is to make sure that you can sustain long-term success at the highest level. And he goes, Oh yeah, that's cool, man. I just, I want to make sure that, uh, it was a good show for the cameras. And I'm like, you mother, you know, but like, that's what I mean. You've got to identify when there's conflict. Is it happening at like this intra intrapersonal level? And, uh, is it the environment, right? Is somebody, a lot of fighters that I work with, they don't like the, the weight room. They think lifting weights makes them slow. And that's not, that's not true. But I understand that when they come in there, they're fairly reticent. So I've got to, you know, be compassionate to that. Well, to yeah. go along with that, we're almost at a place where when does the show stop? Especially if Good you point. are an athlete and the attention is always on you. There's an argument to say that the show doesn't stop yeah. and it's always on. Well, uh, Johnny's just getting over AB leaving the Steelers. And the, the, yeah, let's the dig show, in there a little bit. Well, I feel like you have more to say on that. Can you elaborate? Because I, I just trained, trained a wide receiver that's going in to be a part of the new wide receiving crew. Oh, okay. And you uh, should hear... I got a lot of inside information oh, I bet here. You do. This is yeah, not a sports <laughs> podcast. We'll, we'll table that. We'll have that outside of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. But exactly what you're saying, this understanding of where is the conflict coming from first, right? I think everyone feels conflict and their internal kicks in and they're like, okay, I don't want to be here. And when we are adept at handling conflict, the first step is identifying, okay, what is the root cause of the conflict? Is it truly me? Because we can handle that. Is it environmental? Because we can also handle that. And I love in that story the understanding that sometimes you have to give ground, right? It's not about always being the alpha and being the dominant one and winning every competition and conflict. Sometimes it's being able to walk away, take the L, reassess, readjust, and then know that the next time you're interacting, you're going to be in control. You're going to be able to handle it. Yeah, it's spot on, AJ. It's, I mean, it's power dynamics, right? And sometimes, just look at chess. Sometimes you got to sacrifice something sure. in the short term for the long play. I mean, anybody that's been married before understands that. <laughs> you know, it's impression management at its purest. Like, you've just got to, and that those things aren't, I think it's funny, and this is why I appreciate what you guys talk about, is people think that influence and persuasion and power dynamics are these dark Machiavellian things things they're not you do them every day yes right it's all it's just like fire or physics it's neither inherently bad or good they just are it's mm-hmm. all on how you wield it um but yeah without a doubt sometimes you just got to take a step back and be like maybe i'm the problem or sometimes you run from conflict i think people think conflict is also bad you have to cross wires if you want to create sparks what's bad is being passive aggressive about it and walking away from conflict all the time because it's a skill it's just like any other social skill that you've got to refine 